Hello, it's James, and yes, after a almost complete summer absence, I'm back in the shop again. Um, I'm here for part three of making an aspen log bunk bed. Um, if you've watched parts one and two, you've seen how I peel logs and sand them and get them ready with tenons and mortises to be able to be assembled. Um, I, I want to apologize, it's been a long time since I've uh, posted uh, a video. We've had a very busy summer here in Colorado. Um, we have a lot of land to take care of. I've been trimming trees and, and mowing lawn and, and just basically getting this house that we just recently bought uh, to resemble what we want rather than what the previous owners wanted. So I apologize, but I'm back doing projects again. And uh, apology number two, um, I had, as you can see, this is the headboard for the, for the bunk bed. I'll go into it in greater detail in a minute. But the videos that I made of assembling these ended up on a corrupted SIM card. So I don't have those videos. I'm just going to have to use your imagination. Go back to video two where I was assembling the side rails for the top to keep the kids from falling out. Um, and then just project that into how I did these. I'm going to do a handheld camera and show you what I've accomplished so far. So this is one of the headboards. This is the corner of the short side that the children will climb up this ladder uh, to get up to the second bunk. Um, as you can see, I've tried to keep a lot of the character of the wood facing out so that it can be seen. This particular piece has three coats of polyurethane, water-based polyurethane on it right now. And that'll probably be the completed finish. It's got a nice gleam to it. Um, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I'm just sorry I couldn't show you how I drilled the holes and glued it together. But based on my previous videos, like I said, uh, you should be able to uh, gather that. Um, this is the unfinished headboard, the one that goes up at the top where the pillows are. And you can see I've mortised a two inch hole at the top, a three inch hole that would be for the bottom of the safety rail, and then a three inch hole for the log that's going to hold the mattress, and then a three inch hole at the bottom for the other log that's going to hold the mattress. And these here are the logs that will be put in those holes, these tenons that will be put in those holes and they have a flattened side on them with a 2x2 two two glued on and that's what will hold the plywood that will actually hold up the mattress. And these are all finished with three coats of water-based polyurethane as well, um, keeping a, a nice shine to it. I'm using uh, this from Home Depot. Um, and I'm brushing it on because um, if I try to spray it in my spray booth, most of the polyurethane will just go into the thin air. Uh, there's not a lot of flat surfaces here. So this is the unfinished headboard that I will be beginning to polyurethane today. And over on the other side of the shop are the safety rails that go up on top of the bunk bed. Uh, based on the diagram I showed in my previous uh, video. So, um, like I said, I'm going to be finishing this in three coats of polyurethane, and then the follow-up video will be hopefully uh, doing a dry fit to make sure everything fits together before we carry it into the house. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll be getting these videos posted shortly. So stay with us. Okay, so before we glue this up, we're going to clamp it together and measure on the ends to make sure that this, we have the same distance between centers from here to there. Now the whole idea was to have it 24 inches between centers to make the drilling of the posts that hold this. Um, easy, to, easy to cut and uh, make everything uniform 
So we're going to use these binding straps or ratchet straps to uh, pull this together. And I see it coming together now. That's tight. And we'll measure between centers and make sure everything's lined up before we uh, before we actually glue it. So bear with me. Okay, so I made some adjustments and I had to take, you can see this much, well maybe you can't. Can you see that? Yeah, I had to take that much off of two of the spindles at the far end because they weren't cut at a 90 degree angle so they were tapered a little bit and that was keeping it from compressing. And then I took uh, another cut and added three eighths into one of these holes at the bottom or at the near side and I clamped it back up again and now when I take the measurement I have exactly 24 inches between centers here and I have between centers there. So I can start gluing this up and I can drill these, po these uh, end posts with uh, confidence that everything will fit together. I will be doing the same thing for that side. So let me uh, get the clamps off and we'll get started gluing. Okay so we're all set up to glue and there's a few things to remember when you're gluing and that is something I forgot to mention. Um, it looks more natural if branches are going up. Anything that comes off of these spindles go up instead of down. That would look kind of silly. And then the next thing is to find the side that you want out. The most attractive side, and in this case it would be this one. So I have a silly little acid brush here. Um, and we're going to use this to, to put the glue in. And you can be kind of liberal with the glue. Uh, and then we've got to work kind of quick so that we can clamp this before all the glue sets. So, and we're going to make sure that you bottom out in the hole. That's pretty important to keep the proper distances. I've already taken an air gun and blown out all of these holes to get all of the residual sawdust out of them. So, I like that side there. 
So what I'll do is glue a bunch of these up. I'll stop the camera and then I'll come back when we're ready to put all the glue in the bottom piece because that has to be glued in mass. So stay tuned and we'll get these all glued up. Okay, I've got glue in all of these holes. And now comes the somewhat daunting task of getting the rest of the spindles installed without losing what we got. It's a matter of jiggling and juggling and Make sure your sides are the ones you want to see. Try to start closing it up and get the clamp going. check the distance and centers and see if the glue stopped us from clamping it all the way. So this is exactly 24 and this side is Everything is glued up, or the top two railings anyway, and I put some temporary little braces up to hold it up, blown off all the dust, taking care of all the imperfections that I wanted to take care of. And now we're going to start using the first coat of water-based polyurethane. So we will start uh, finishing these and hopefully get two coats on them oh, in the next few hours. Um, this is kind of the painstaking make sure every surface is covered time. So um, 
I have a spray booth, but I didn't want to try and spray these because um, trying to get even coverage, you end up getting overspray and all the connections. So um, we're just going to brush it on and uh, we'll be back when we're done. So you just put on some good music and get after it. Sure does bring out the color. synthetic steel wool and I'm just going to rub the whole thing down and that takes all of the wool. Uh, it, it makes it smooth, let's just say that. It, it's, it feels pretty rough when you first feel it and uh, the polyurethane is a little bit bumpy. So we'll just wipe this down and it does take off all of the all the little burrs so that the second coat will be even smoother than this one. So I'm planning three coats on this bed. So just a lot of time finishing before it's worth it when you see it done. So I'll be at this for a while. Don't go away because I'll be back when we're done. So stay tuned. sending the tenons to fit into the mortises because I was a little off. Let's flip it over. Um, what will be the side of the bed that faces out to the room and glue up all the bottoms on both sides and then pull the top in do more gluing up there hopefully not spill glue all over I don't care don't care about that Alright, well, it's glued and it's clamped. Um, it's a little tippy because the log skewed it a little bit, but we're going to shim the corners so that it doesn't rock and roll. And I say overall, this went much better than I thought it was going to. Looks great. It's a beautiful piece of furniture. Would it be hard to. So here is the finished bunk bed in its location. Uh, we've already had grandkids come over 
and of course fight over who sleeps in the top. But it's been a, a wonderful project and a great success. We even made a matching lamp from one of the same logs. So thank you so much for watching. Please click the like button and please subscribe and be back for our next projects, with our, which are going to be very, very exciting. So thanks again. Bye.